Okay, what did you guys get for the sequence? What did you guys get for the sequence? What's the first rate? Zero? Right, but how do we find amounts of accumulation? It's not rate times time. Change in time. Right? So do you have zero? No. No. Right? Rate times change in time. Okay, so what's the next one? Also the same thing? Okay, what's the next one? Okay. No, didn't make it. <laughs> okay, I put the answer to. What did you guys get for part B for the value? Final value is point, negative 0.4725. Okay, I put the answer to B up. Just can check to make sure you're doing it right. <coughs> Okay, what did you guys get for part C? So let's not go any further into... Um, if you've already, if you're already past E, let's just pause for a second. So let's make sure we get parts A through D. Okay, so questions on A and B. So are we all up to speed on that? So again, this just goes back to the very simple thing that we always have to keep in mind, that a sequence is a list of values. The series is then the sum of those values. Okay? You don't have to have a sigma to have a series. Okay? It's a sum. And that's the first and foremost way you should think about it. Now, to make our life easier, when there's a pattern, we use the sigma, the sum. But first and foremost, it's just adding up the terms of the sequence. Never forget that. So whenever you see one of those sigmas, you have to think this. Okay? Whenever you see one of those sigmas, this is what you have to think. Oh, it's just adding up a bunch of stuff. Okay? <clears throat> or a bunch of terms from a sequence. Okay, so then the sequence of partial sums. Tell me quickly. So the first one is. And now how do I get the second term in the sequence of partial sums? Add the first and the second. So it's going to be. Okay, how do I get the third term in the sequence of partial sums? Add the first three. Negative point. Just three. Beautiful, okay. Four, seven, two, five. Okay, so this first question is really about understanding what these things are. So we get into all the, the details of algebra and, sim, and symbols and notation. You can never lose sight of what the things are. So we got the list of values. Then we have the sum of all the values in the list. And then the sequence of partial sums means each next term adds one more, adds one more term uh, from the sum. Okay, so what's the meaning of the series? So this value right here, as relating to the flag, <coughs> In terms of rate of change and accumulation, what is that? Yeah, Jordan. Why is the first term the Because how do we calculate an amount of accumulation? dy equals 
m dx, right? So are you saying that the rate is zero or dx is zero? Which are you saying? So for it to be zero, either the rate's got to be zero or dx is zero. So which one? Neither of those are zero, right? The first rate is given, and what's the first change in times? 0.15. You see that? So neither the rate nor the change in time is zero. So, so you're not going to get zero for the first, first little amount. Okay, so <clears throat> sequence of partial sum. So what does the series represent in terms of rate or accumulation? What is that number? Negative 0.4725. But what does that have to do with the flag? Yeah, no. Okay, so it's a uh, like it's a, a net accumulation. Is what you're just gonna say? It's accumulation of height over what? <coughs> yeah. So actually, it's actually over the first not 0.6 seconds, but yeah, 0.75, right? Because that lat the fifth interval would be from 0.6 to 0.75. You're using 0.6 as the left side of that last interval. So this is the net change in height or net accumulation of height in the first 0 0.75 seconds when you add all those up, right? Okay, so now this sequence, what does this have to do with what what thing does this is this kind of a representation of the sequence? Negative point one one two five, negative point two two five, negative point three. What is that? What is that talking about with the flag, and what is that kind of a representation of? So let's just how about the individual numbers. So say the negative point three. What is that? Yeah. So that's. All the accumulation in the first three time intervals, right? And then this negative 0.36 would be? First four intervals. And then? All five intervals, right? So this sequence of values is kind of like what? Important concept or thing. Yeah. What's that? Uh, if you're, maybe if you're more specific. But it's a list, right? So it's a sequence. So what's like a se what's this kind of like, Alex? How much fighting lower after i Okay, and so yeah, what are you talking? If you, if you want some some quantity, how what the height is after i seconds, you're talking about yeah, net accumulation function, right? This is just the dependent variable, though, right? So it's just like the y variable for the net accumulation function of height. See that? But kind of like in like an, as a you know in table form. It's not it's not continuous. We just have certain values. But this is kind of representation of the net accumulation of height variable or the net accumulation of height function. <clears throat> Does it make sense? Okay, so now moving on to the next thing. Are, are any more any questions on number one? So this is just like the like if there was a graph. It would be like it would yeah it would be like point every point five seconds would be points on the graph of the net accumulation function or the, the y values right it'd be the y values of points on the net accumulation function or the, or the height right so it's like or no not, not the height right it's the it's the uh, net accumulation to get the height we'd have to start by adding whatever three meters right we'd start it would be three meters plus all of these then you'd have height. But this is net accumulation of height, or change in height. OK, other discussion on A through E, or A through D. All right, so now this next part, a little bit more abstract here. So we don't have any rate values now. We just have the function R sub H. Okay, so we want to write the general term for the sequence. It's the same thing we started with before, but we don't have actual data values. We just have this function, r sub h, and we don't, we don't really know what the values of the function are. Okay, so now we want to do 40 intervals of 0.1 seconds each. 
So the first thing in the sequence is going to be same as what we did before. It's going to be in a, uh, a little bit of accumulation, which we find by mdx. So what's it going to be? So how do we express the rate in the first interval? So, so yeah, so, so all these are going to be mdx. So what's the rate in the first interval? R sub h of 0. So that's the rate. And then if we want to get the amount of accumulation in the first interval, we're going to do it times. So function notation, right? Function notation, this thing we keep hammering, right? So is it at your fingertips? Could, could you... <coughs> Could you do something like that without my help? All right, next uh, amount of accumulation. R sub h of 0 0.1 times the change, 0 0.1. And once you got those, it's easy. Then R sub h of. So now the question is, can we write a general term here? So we have to look at the pattern. So this is I equals... 1, 2, 3. So when i is 3, we have r sub h of 0 0.2 times 0 0.1. When r is 4, we have r sub h of 0 0.3 times 0 0.1. So all we have to figure out is how we get 0 0.2 from 3 and how we get 0 0.3 from 4. And we'll do one more. R sub h of 0.4 times 0 0.1. How do we get 0 0.4 from 5? Okay, so some of you are starting to get it. So the general term would be R sub h of something always times 0 0.1. The question is, what is that something for the ith term? So again, so the third term is 0.2, so the fourth term is 0.3, the fifth term is 0.4. So for the i-th term, you got to do something before we divide by 10, right? So if the fifth term is 0.4, subtract one. we're going to subtract 1 and then divide by 10 or take 0.1 of that. So Or again. You can also write that as like point, like one tenth times ten minus one. Yeah. Like I yeah. So uh, I minus one. Sorry, I didn't leave enough room. Over ten. It's going to give you the right interval, and then times point one. Point one I. Okay, questions on that? Does it make sense? So this is just this is just like the sequence we did in part A. It's just like the sequence we did in part A, except now the interval is smaller, it's 0.1. And we don't know those rates, we have to express them using function notation. Okay, but Tony, you use the sigma when we did this problem. Is it asking you for like multiple heights or e? is it just like each? Are you asking you about E or F? We don't do sigma for that one. So sigma represents sum. So is this a sum or? Approximately because there's an accumulation. So we don't add like each in one. Yeah, so it's a sequence, right? So yeah, we're talking about the sequence h sub i. So if it's a sequence, it's, there's no, we're not adding anything up. We're just getting the list. Now the series would be what? <coughs> so now here, here's where sigma notation is. Convenient, because I don't want to write all this stuff out again, right? I don't want to write out all those terms again with plus signs. And they're all so similar that I can just I can just use the general term. And so now here's where sigma comes in. So I'm going to do sigma, right? I equals what? 1, 2, 40 of that. 
yeah, R sub H of, we already got the general term of the sequence, so we can just write it down. But when you see that, you think what? When you see that, you think what? Adding up these, right? R sub h of 0 times 0 0.1 plus R sub h of 0 0.1 times 0 0.1 plus R sub h of 0.2 times 0.1. So when you see this, you think the sum of all these. And how, do, how does this work? Well, I takes on the value of 1. And we take, get the first term, right? And then i takes on the value of 2. And we get the next term. And we add it on. Yep. And then i takes on the value of 3. And then we get the next term. All the way up to i equals 40. So then it's going to make 40 terms that we're going to add together. All right. So now, what's the sequence of partial sums of this? How would you explain what the sequence of... So let's do that. So explain to the person next to you, I've got this series. What's the sequence of partial sums for that series? What, what would it consist of or what is, what is it like? How would you describe that to somebody? Do that. Describe that to somebody. What's the sequence of partial sums? Okay. Where's Denzel? Oh, there you are. Tell me about uh, the um, the first few terms. So, what's the first term of the sequence of partial sums? Yeah. Okay. Okay. And then, what would be the next term in the sequence of partial sums? Is that the next term in the sequence of partial sums? Plus the previous. Plus the previous. So, so you're changing your mind here. So, so uh, let me do that one first. Right, because, so, yes, so that's the second, that whole thing is the second term, right? The first term of the sequence up there plus the second term of the sequence up there is the second term of the sequence of partial sums. And then the third term in the sequence of partial sums would be what, Christopher? What would the third term of the sequence of partial sums be? What would I write next if I had a lot of room? What's that? It would be accumulating. So what can you describe what I would write? Um, it's going to be a lot more than that. Where's John Maelstrom? John here? How about uh, King Fei? So what would I? What would the third term of the sequence of partial sums be? What would I write next in this? Uh, point point two, right? Yeah. Right. So it would be the third term would be this plus this. Plus this. That would that what I circled and added in red would be the next term in the sequence of partial sums. Does it make sense? All right. So then, how do I write the general term? So any term in this. So I want the ith term of this sequence. How would I write it? What's that? Summation. Okay, summation of i equals 1, 2. 
40. So is that any term in the sequence of partial sums? It's just times 200. Yes, yeah, something else, right? So n, we could use n. And then r sub h, i minus 1. If I write to 40, then I've, what have I written? I've written the 40th partial sum. The 40th partial sum is the same as the series, right? The 40th partial sum is the same as the whole series. Okay, so if I want just any partial sum, then it's going to be given some, some n between, you know, n is some number between 0 and 40. Maybe n is 22. Well, then I'm going to add up from i equals 1 to 22 to get the 22nd term of the sequence of partial sums. Does it make sense? And then if n is 30, 34, then that sum will give me 34 things added together, and that would be the 34th term of this sequence of partial sums. All right, any questions on page 1? Page two, go. How are we doing? All right, so the series is what? So if, so if you're writing a series, you're never going to use the chevrons, right? The chevrons, these like bracket things, the, those are always for, for a sequence. So now we're going to do the series. And what does the series mean? It just means add all these up. That's all it means. It means add all these up. But if you have the general term, that's when you can use the sigma, right? So I can do the sigma, right? I equals what? 1, 2, infinity. He's still walking. Still walking, okay. Of 1 over 2 to the i, or I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write it as 1 half to the i. Same thing. Now, what, when you see that, what does that mean, right? What does that mean? It means adding up to one half plus a quarter. One half plus quarter one quarter. Plus and when do I stop? Never. Never. <laughs> so that's the series associated with that sequence. Question? Yeah, please. The list in list form. I said list form, so just list them out. Right. Um. Yeah. The list form associated with the series is, is part C. No, that's the sequence of partial sums. Yeah, but he's saying. No, I think I think he's saying I think he's saying. Did you mean this or did you mean this? Is that what you're saying? Uh, so, either would have been an acceptable answer. Okay, either would have either. Okay, just focus on understanding the stuff, guys. Just focus on understanding the stuff. Either would be an acceptable answer, but because we have the because we have the general term of the sequence, it's easiest to use the summation form because you just stick it in. See that? But in your mind, whenever you see this, you have to be very confident that it's this. So I just went ahead and wrote it down. So, so don't get caught up in the semantics, right? So, I mean, yes, this is the list for the sequence. This is the general term for the sequence. But either, either of these is a, is a valid, if I don't specify, either of these is a valid representation of the series. But if you have the general term for the sequence, then you can just write write the series down pretty easily because you just stick a sum in front of it. Does that answer the question? Yeah. Okay. All right. So now the sequence of partial sums. As a list, right? So as a list, what's the first term of the sequence? One half. Second term of the sequence? Three fourths. Seven eighths, fifteen sixteenths, 
That's, that's, so what are we doing? So each one of those is the sum of the first, all the first, like this one is the sum of the first three terms of that sequence above. And this one is the sum of the first five terms of that sequence above. So we're making a new, a new sequence. Okay, so now this is now where we have to come up with, if this is one, two, three, four, anyone come up with formula? So that, yeah, so that the top, do you see that the top is always one less than the power of two? So this is like two to the i minus one over just the power of two? Just two to the i? Oh, that's, sorry, that's part two. This, that's this. All right, so what does this sequence represent about the turtle? It's the total distance traveled after i days, right? It's the total distance traveled after i days. The original sequence was just how much he traveled in each day. And if we keep adding those up, one after another, then we get the total distance traveled after the i-th day. Total distance. That's what the sequence of partial sums means in this case. Okay, so question, does he ever make it across the line? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. Yes, he does. If you say no, he doesn't, then that's, that's a particular partial sum. If you pick any particular partial sum, then no, he doesn't. But if you take the whole series, he makes it. And we'll prove it on Friday. We'll prove it on Friday.